Hey y'all, this is Andrea here at BW Family Farm and this video is gonna be a bit different. I wanna take you out on our farm and show you some things that's going on. So if you've been around here for a while, you know earlier in this year, this is 2022. And I know you know that, but this is for people who might be watching this in the future. Just wanna clarify kind of what's went on this year. So we are in central Arkansas in zone 7B. And earlier this year here in the South, we had a major, major drought and things got pretty desperate here. Our hay situation and just our grazing situation, everything was at desperate levels. And then all of a sudden we have lots of rain and we wound up getting a record year of hay cut and lots of grazing and then just all of a sudden late summer the water just turned off we generally have hurricanes um, that spin up showers even though we're nowhere really near the coast we have hurricanes that come up or tropical storms and we usually get plenty of rain in the fall but not this year everything is really stressed we're in another drought um, it's just crazy how things change so quickly. So with that being said, we are talking about one of the major hidden dangers on our farm, as well as it could be on your farm, and that is prussic acid. So hydrocyanic acid, or commonly known as prussic acid, is generally found in stress plants and is formed by enzymatic action on compounds called the cyanogenetic glucosides. So that's a big mouthful, but that happens when growth is adversely affected. So when we're talking about healthy plants, uh, then those cells containing the glucosides and enzymes, apparently they keep these things separated. So what we're talking about is when growth is depressed by adverse environmental conditions like moisture stress or frost. So this is a concern right now because we are in a drought. Um, and so that's when the enzymatic action may take place and produce what we're talking about as prussic acid. Um, this also happens when we get our first frost. So basically what I'm saying is the breakdown of plant cells by crushing or by bacterial action in the rumen of the animal may also result in prussic acid formation. Okay, so when it's broken down in the rumen by the enzymatic action, and by rumen, I mean that is the system of the stomachs of like a cow, um, in this case is what we're talking about. And so what happens is the cyanide is absorbed and combines with the hemoglobin in the bloodstream. So that's why if an animal dies from this condition I'm gonna to talk to you about today, their blood is probably gonna be very, very bright, bright red um, because their electron transport system has been affected at the cellular level and it's preventing their cells from receiving oxygen from the blood. Now, I know a lot of this is technical, but what basically that boils down to and means is the blood is able to transport oxygen from the lungs, but the body tissue can't take it up. So basically what happens when an animal succumbs to this is they suffocate. So all of this to say, this is a serious issue and um, it's very concerning and it can be very devastating to your animal herd. So the amount of this prussic acid or HCN found in plant tissue varies among the species, okay? So we're talking here about Arkansas, but I'm gonna name you several uh, plants that could be affected even though we do not have all of those on our farm. But of the plants grown here in Arkansas, those belonging to the sorghum category are most most likely to contain the potentially toxic levels. So like grain sorghum, that is, that's the highest, that's number one on the list, followed by Johnson grass, which is what we are gonna talk about today because that is what we have on our farm. Um, and then sorghum Sudan hybrids and then pure Sudan grass, which we have grown here on our farm as soil builders and just different things like that. We don't grow it in large amounts, but we have grown it up here in our gardens. So 
So let's talk about Johnson grass. It grows wild throughout our state and it infests many areas that people graze. Now, if you close graze Johnson grass for several years, you're pretty much gonna destroy it. You're gonna eliminate it from your pastures. And honestly, that's what a lot of people like to do. We do not because it is one of the things as we are building up our farm and our rotational grazing, it is one of the things that our cows thrive on the most. We just have to be careful with it, but we're not looking to eliminate it. We are looking to manage it here on our farm. Things like millet though are free from this toxin. So it's HCN or this prussic acid may be produced by a few other plant species as well. They're not things we generally have to worry about, but they're worth mentioning. Wild cherry trees can produce toxic levels um, and HCN poisoning occurs most often when the animals are consuming like the wilted leaves after the trees have been damaged. Like if a storm blows a limb down or if you prune them and leave the, them laying around and the animal comes and munches on the dried or wilted leaves, that can be a big problem. Um, HCN or prussic acid, I want to tell you a few things about it. It's higher in young plants than older ones, and the content of the leaves is higher than that of the stems. Upper leaves contain more than the lower ones. Uh, prussic acid concentration decreases as the plants become taller and more mature. A lot of people do not know that. They think the bigger, the more harmful, but that's not true. Usually, if they're 18 to 24 inches tall, they're less likely to contain high concentrations of the toxin. It's the immature plants and regrowth that are following haying or grazing that are gonna have your highest levels. And we have some short Johnson grass on our farm right now because uh, we have cut hay as much as possible because I told you we got a lot of rain and we had to cut hay uh, we had to go at it hot and heavy because we were in a desperate situation for hay. So as that grass regrows, then that's when you need to be aware. Also, one major, major factor is plants growing under stressful conditions, and that's what we have going on right now with the drought. Also, if you fertilize with commercial fertilizer and you fertilize more than 75 pounds of nitrogen per acre, um, you may be putting more toxins in those plants. Plants have more potential for producing prussic acid if the soil is high in nitrogen and deficient in phosphate and potassium. So that's why you need to do soil sampling sometimes. Um, most of the time you're going to be okay, but when you get in situations like this where we're in any kind of stressful situation, that's when you really need to know your soil. So I want to stress on what you need to be aware of. Frosted, wilted, or drought stress plants are most likely to develop prussic acid. During early drought stress, the grass may appear normal in the morning, but it can wilt during afternoon heat, which increases the toxic potential. One thing worth noting, and this was pretty eye-opening to me as I was doing research for this, I know some things about prussic acid, but I wanted to make sure I had all my facts straight. Um, and we talked to our county extension agent, which is a great resource. If you have one of those in your area, you need to meet them, get to know them. They will help you tremendously. And he mentioned this and um, it, it's, it's a fact. Many producers believe the white powdery substance that you commonly see on Johnson grass stems in late summer is prussic acid residue, but that is simply not true. That is just only common powdery mildew fungus. Um, it's not considered toxic to livestock. So that is not a sign of prussic acid. That's not prussic acid. So don't be alarmed if you see that. You're gonna be looking for other factors. If you are have a threat of frost, like if frost is likely, do not allow your animals to remain in pastures with the Johnson grass at night. If you have new growth coming on after you've cut hay, and you get a good rain, you need to be aware because new rapid growth from rainfall or after haying, that is the time that you need to be aware. Um, if you're in a drought situation, as the drought continues, you need to start being wary of your Johnson grass. And after you get a rain right after the drought ends, be wary of the Johnson grass. Under normal conditions, Johnson grass is a good forage and it is safe. You just, in any time of growth, stress that's what you need to be thinking about is what do I have my cows grazing on right now so I want to also tell you some things that you can do about it um, if you do have these situations going on if you're like us and you are in a time of growing stress 
One simple solution I wanna mention is prussic acid dissipates as the forage dries. So you can always just go in and cut that for hay. Well cured hay is considered safe. Um, make sure the Johnson grass patches or other you know, grasses in this family are mowed before allowing the animals to graze it and make sure the cut Johnson grass is dried completely to allow the prussic acid to dissipate. So to be more specific, don't graze drought damaged plants in any form, regardless of height, within four days following a good rain. It's during this period of rapid growth that the accumulation of HCN in the young tissue and of nitrates in the stems is most likely to occur. Also, don't graze wilted plants or plants with young regrowth. Don't rely on drought damaged material as your only source of feed. Keep either dry forage like hay or green chop like silage from other crops available at all times. Uneven growth as a result of drought can best be utilized as silage or hay. So again, back to hay is always a safe option. Don't use frost damage sorghum or Johnson grass as pasture or green chop during the first seven days after the first killing frost. Delay pasturing for at least seven days or until the frosted material is completely dried out and brown colored. Don't rely on frosted material as the only source of feed. Don't graze at night when frost is likely. And don't turn hungry cattle onto a pasture of sorghum, sorghum Sudan hybrid, or Johnson grass. Fill them up first and then begin grazing them in the late afternoon. So that means if you have to juggle your paddocks around, do that. Don't turn starving cows in on something potentially that could harm them to where they're gonna overeat on it. And also very, very important, I wanna mention it again, don't allow animals to graze fields with succulent young short growth. Graze only after plants reach a height of 18 to 24 inches. So what do you do if you suspect that your animals do have prussic acid poisoning. Um, you can actually treat them with a sodium nitrite or sodium thiosulfate combination. It can be injected intravenously and very slowly. And But I do want to mention the dosage and the method that you administer it are very critical. I would advise you, highly advise you to consult your vet um, to correctly diagnose it and then to determine how to treat your animal, whether that's you buying supplies and doing it or having your vet do it. So this is not a fatal sentence, like something like um, we've dealt with black leg in the past and by the time we found it, it was pretty much a fatal diagnosis. This is not like that, but also if you are being risky with some of your practices, you are taking a chance on losing some because the only people that I know personally that have dealt with this have lost their animals. So I'm not saying you can't save them, but I just don't think it's really common that you will. I hope that this information is helpful and it can help you determine if you are having some of these problems on your own farm. I hope that we all get rain soon, or if you're somewhere you need the rain to stop and dry up a bit, I hope you get that as well. I thank you guys for coming along and for being part of our YouTube family, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching, and God bless.